Today we're going to tackle the question, how do biologists measure evolution? In order to do that, we're going to have to first answer a more fundamental question. What is evolution, anyway? And we could look at evolution in a lot of ways. We could look at how smaller horses became the large modern horse that we have today. Or we could look at the various plant forms that came into existence over the last few million years. Or we could look at how fish evolved the ability to walk on land. But what we're going to do is take a look at what a biologist might do today if they were going to go out to measure evolution in a natural population. And what they would look for are changes in frequencies of gene sequences in a population. Gene sequences, again, these are the A's, C's, T's, and G's that are inside of the DNA of each of our cells that act as sort of the recipe for the cells. Before we go on, we should differentiate the definitions of a gene and an allele. Now, a gene, this is simply a location on a chromosome. This is a part of the DNA somewhere that can be expressed. And all humans are going to share the same genes. For example, we're all going to have genes for hair color. An allele, on the other hand, is actually the DNA sequence. It is the version of the gene that you have. So you might have brown hair, and that would come from brown hair allele, or you might have blonde hair, which would come from blonde hair alleles. But we all have different alleles, unless you're identical twins. Now, why do we care about these alleles? Again, the alleles actually influence the traits. So if we go and look at an allele, here's a short DNA sequence, it is going to guide the synthesis of some kind of protein. And that protein is going to do something in the cell that's going to influence a trait. In this case, we'll say that it influences the color of a cat. And this cat with this allele is going to turn out brown. Now a different cat that has a different allele would turn out to have a different color, in this case maybe orange. And this is why that multiple cats inside of the same litter are going to end up having different colors because they inherit different alleles. Unless, of course, they're identical twins. So let's get back to our original question. How do we measure evolution? Well, if we're going to measure evolution, and evolution is defined through alleles, we're going to have to measure alleles. But specifically, we're going to actually have to count alleles and measure their frequency. And if you're going to look at the frequency, you have to have a population. So we could go out and look at a population of cats and measure the frequencies of different cat alleles. Now, each cat, just like in humans, are actually going to carry two copies of every chromosome. So they're going to have two copies of each allele. And it's the combination of these alleles, which is called a genotype, that will actually finally give rise to the trait. So in our case, we'll say if a cat has two gray alleles, it's going to be gray. And if a cat has inherited two brown alleles, it's going to turn out brown. And if a cat inherits one gray allele and one brown allele, it will then turn out to be an orange cat. So how do we analyze these alleles? Well, like many problems, it can be solved with an equation. And this one is pretty simple. It simply says the frequency of an allele is equal to the number of that allele divided by the total number of alleles in the population. So if we take a look at the brown allele in our case, we can quickly count up these alleles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine brown alleles in our population. Then we have to calculate the total number of alleles in the population. In our case, this is always going to be equal to the total number of individuals in our population times two, because each individual carries two alleles. So we can just count cats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten cats times two alleles each means we're going to have 20 total alleles. If we do the division here, nine divided by 20 gives us 0.45. So now we know that the frequency of the brown allele is equal to 0.45. In other words, 45% of all the alleles in the population are brown. But we still haven't got to the question that we started with about evolution. What about measuring evolution? Well, one way that we could do this is go out to a population in the field, sample a bunch of them, and count up their alleles. And we can say, hey, this is the frequency of the alleles. 0.45 of all the alleles here are brown.
and then come back much later in time and count them again and to see if our allele frequency has changed. And if we find that it has, in this case it went down from 0.45 to 0.30, then we can say yes, evolution happened. And that is actually a great way to do it. Except if you wanted to study something today, because evolution often takes a long time to happen. So what if you want to know about evolution now? And again, fortunately for us, we have an equation that can help us with this. It's called the Hardy-Weinberg equation. And it says that p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1. And you might recognize this as the quadratic equation. And in fact, it is the quadratic equation. It has these three terms, p squared, 2pq, and q squared, made up of two variables, p and q. Each of our variables, p and q, are going to represent the frequency of an allele. So let's just say that p is equal to the frequency of the brown allele. We already know, because we did this math, that the frequency of the brown allele in our original population was 0.45. So instead of looking at the variables, let's take a look at the terms, and let's start looking at what p squared means. p squared here is the frequency of p times the frequency of p, which gives us what the frequency of the genotype is for the cat that has two brown alleles. And in this case, this is going to be a brown cat we happen to know. So the frequency of the brown brown genotype the cat that has two brown alleles is going to be 0.45 times 2. And if you do that math, it ends up being around 0 0.20. So, the Hardy-Weinberg equation simply tells us this, that if your allele frequency is 0.45, then the amount of individuals that carry both of those alleles should be equal to 0.2. And we can go back out into our cat population and count them. And here we can see that there are three. One, two, three cats. That means that the equation wasn't true. And any time the equation doesn't accurately represent what's happening in your cats, that means that something is altering the cat population. And that is the definition of evolution.